Hello everyone, I'm Kring here and I have a voice actresses and actors with me this time. Um, I have Huntress here. Hello. Then I have Kilo. Hello. I have Rose. Hi. And Sophia. Hello. So Sophia Lam. Yeah, oh, we, we decided to do some fault my milestone one because yeah, and th these voice actors and act actresses are actually on my seduce me project, which is going to be starting soon. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. <Exciting. laughs> <laughs> ow, ow, ow. Wow! We're all excited here. Yeah. I yes, we're all. And for the security oh. security reasons, I'm not putting any music up because otherwise that will give me a copyright strike. Apparently. Yeah. So without further ado, let's start. And um, for this, I need something like narrative part. Who wants uh, to do that? Raise his hand. <laughs> All right. That's that. The word is ruse and hide. Rosenheil? Yeah, Rosenheil. Rosenheil. Yeah. Rosenheil. Okay. And uh, uh. you can, whoever wants to start the narration part can. Uh, okay. I just, I, uh, I raised my hand. I said okay. to raise my hand. Okay. So I guess okay. I was like, oh, sorry. Oh. Okay. Yay. I get to narrate. Uh, <laughs> apologize because I'm not like, uh, <laughs> it's I'm fine. not like. Go ahead. Yeah, I can't. I can't see. Oh dear. Um, hold on. Um, oh dear. I'm oh, sorry. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, oh never mind. Now? Never mind. Dear. <laughs> uh, I, I get fine. Okay. <clears throat> so is this, is this what I is this what I get? Is yeah. what I get to say? All right. Uh, Rugs and but, but, okay. Right, I need you to say the name again. <laughs> Rugs and Hyde. All right. Rugs and Hyde Castle, the Great Hall to the Sky Terrace. A spark shot and flames spread throughout the, throughout the great hall. A, sm a small shadow ascended the spiral staircase to the sky terrace. Uh, this is the first girl role. Basically, she's the lolly and yeah, I don't know. Lolly. Definitely not me. I'm just <laughs> telling you now. Just telling you now. <laughs> telling you. <laughs> How young is she? Um... I don't know, but uh, uh, seeing her um, attire and whatnot, I think she's she's around teen or something, or early teen or something. I don't know. Oh, Young adult or teenager? Yeah, kind of. All right. Um, mm. um, just... Who wants to do this one? Raise your yes. hand. I'll take it. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, right. be a trooper. Be a trooper. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Should I just go? Yeah, that that, is, that that this girl name is Coco, I think. Yeah. Okay. So oh, cute. Uh, pay attention to characters' uh, emotions and whatnot on the screen as well. Okay. I, I'm the one who's reached the top of the castle first. A girl, a girl who appeared no oh god <laughs> oh <laughs> you can do the other <laughs> my life you, you can narrate if you want you take yeah. turns oh, narration no i can't read you do it okay oh. a girl who appeared no older than a, chi than a child spearheaded the assault on Ro rosenhide castle and was the first to arrive at the highest point of its keep the sky terrace <laughs> <laughs> sorry i think of you uh, <laughs> <laughs> the girl, alert and aware, struck a defensive pose and quickly scanned her surroundings. She held her breath as she surveyed the terrace. Prior to the assault, the girl's party had received intelligence that the Sky Terrace was unguarded and that the object of the pu that the, and the object and that the object of their pursuit was was secluded in the terrace. Mm. Mana craft. I don't even know how to say this word. Inheritor. In <laughs> Inheritor of the fabled path down... M what? Mana craft. Man 
mana craft, and heiress to the throne. Reveal yourself, Princess Sel Selfine. Selfine Rosenheim. I remember this project. <laughs> you know there's no escape from this. Uh, oh, sassy. <laughs> the girls <Sorry>. shout. <laughs> The girl's shout reverberated throughout the empty terrace. There was no response to the girl's command, but she maintained her guard. Despite her appearance, the girl was an experienced hunter. She moved toward the she moved towards the center of the sky terrace, her short stature producing silent steps, precise and without waste. She has to be here, somewhere. With nothing in sight, the girl began to question the credibility of her intel. Doubt overtook her, and she put her hand on her right ear, and spoke aloud. Sian. Hey Sian, can you hear me? Mm. If you can hear me, respond. Ugh. I guess she's still preoccupied. Our intel was wrong. The target's not here. Nobody's here. The girl relaxed her guard and took a long, deep breath. Hmm? The girl proceeded further into the sky terrace, towards the balcony. There was a solid wood dining table at the center of the balcony, which overlooked the castle town below. Hmm? A beautiful embroidery was, da was draped over the table. There were several large dining chairs pushed underneath, each constructed from solid wood and handcrafted with the impeccable detail. The table and all its amenities were works of art. Every object from the dining table to the decorations strategically placed throughout the sky terrace Scre screamed of wealth. Mm -hmm. Perhaps overcome with envy, the girl proceeded to correct a toppled dining chair at the head at the head of the table, and nonchalantly plopped, plopped herself into the seat. Mm -hmm. oh, a strange God. sensation shot through her small frame. A sensation that could only be described as one of grandeur. At the head of the table overlooking the castle town below sat the girl, her upbringing a complete contrast to the seat's previous occupants. The absurdity, the absurdity of it delighted her. <laughs> Slam. <laughs> Slam. <laughs> The uncouth commoner placed her boots on to the now what the now soiled. the uncouth commoner placed her boots onto the now soiled embroidery covering the table, lounged back in the dining chair and relaxed her eyes. Whose seat was the girl sitting in? Who could be so fortunate enough to be born into such privilege? To be allowed a seat so grand. These trivial thoughts bounced around in the girl's mind. <laughs> okay. The owner of the chair was of little significance, because they had since abandoned the chair, fleeing in fear for their life as the castle came under siege. Sound sound uh, really like jealous or something here. Like what? Hmm? Yeah. Jealous. Yeah. Jealous. Oh, okay. Royalty. Okay. If I could eat on a table like this every day, I'd feel right and royal too. The girl peered down onto the castle town from the balcony and saw the streets engulfed in flames. Beautiful. The town's just glowing. After her sarcastic soliloquy, the girl noticed something as she left her seat. Hmm? Another girl, and this one, basically, this girl is, um, she, 
she doesn't speak that much, but she's kind of like um, uh, I know, emotionless. Ray, uh, I'll do uh, it. Ray Ayanami. Yeah. All right, Ray Ayanami. Uh, if I if I may put in a Evangelion reference, a little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's the original okay, one, so you know. Hunter's claim. Here we go. <clears throat> Another girl stood at the entrance from where the first had entered. Okay. Uh, that that's, that's, uh, I think that's the other one. Coco. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Coco! Okay, Mary. how do I say that? Mary. Mistress Mary? Yeah. Okay. The girl addressed as Marie responded to her subordinate's greeting with her special gesture of acknowledgement. An, impre a, an, an impressive way of impressive. the hand. Because, I'm sorry, these, these right. things are in the way. You enjoy sitting. Seat, Coco. Asked Marie of her co compatriot, Coco, in a deadpan, almost intel intelligible manner of speech. N not, at oh shit, N not at all, Mistress. Mistress Marie never appears unnerved by anything we do. Coco silently thought to herself. <laughs> 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 I um, okay. Coco's compatriot, apparent, Mary, appeared no older than Coco herself. Graced with a youthful look, but stunted with the child's height. While Coco appeared overly, overtly belligerent, Mary appeared to exclude, to exclude an aura of harmlessness at first glance. However, her foes were also deceived by her aura. Of harmlessness. The hem of Marie's cloak was dyed from black to damp crimson with her victim's blood. I lost my voice there. Okay. It, it's fine. <laughs> I'm surprised you made it up here without tearing the ta tearing the hem. I hmm? think that's Yeah. What the Marie oh, tilted her head at Coco's <laughs> No it's me. Oh. Marie tilted her head at Coco's comment, puzzled. And ethereal question mark seemed to float over her head. Coco made no sense. Why ruin the cloak? Ru I ruin a good cloak. No reason. No rush. No rush? If you didn't notice, everything's on fire. That's plenty of reason to rush. Thick smoke and the stench of blood polluted the air. Shrieks and explosions echoed through... Rosenheide's castle. Yes. Even though Marie was at the center of the destruction, she was deaf to the orchestra of oblivion in the background. Task near completion. No rush. Y you don't have a point, but... Okay, um, hold on. Let me just do something. Mm -hmm. eh. Eh, crap. Okay, Coco was at a loss for words. Defeated by Marie's simple retort. Target. Where? Oh, right. The target. Well, she's not here. I guess Xi'an was not misinformed. Xi'an. Reliable. Even Xi'an wrong. We obey sister's borders. You mean orders. Orders. <laughs> this was normal. Marie often communicated through expressions and gestures rather than words. Yes, I stated. Marie's mannerisms were simple, frank, and left a little room for interpretation. Where else could the target be? I'm pretty sure we made a thorough sweep. Plan B. Search and destroy? Ugh. This'll take a while. I'm gonna go crazy from searching the whole keep. <laughs> Funny. Coco made a distraught face at the thought of Plan B. A sight that entertained Marie. Marie took slight joy in seeing Coco's distraught expression. Sure, laugh it up. Plan B it is. Let's split up and do a thorough check of the east and west wings. I'll take the east wing. B 
Blink. Blink. <laughs> Ellipses. Yeah. What's wrong? Recall, shadow, soldiers for escort. I'll be fine without them. My 150 shadow, sh shadow soldiers have already decimated most of Rosenhide's warriors, so I'm not counting on encountering anyone. Ellipses. <laughs> but what's the matter, mistress? Don't let over- Don't. Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Don't let overconfidence cloud your judgment. Stated Marie in a soft voice, her words connected and well-formed. Everything's gone, according to Sister's design so far, but you may ultimately need those 150 Shade Soldiers. Shade. Uh, understood. Shade. It's a mouthful. Stuttered Coco. <laughs> Stuttered Coco, standing straight up like a student before a teacher. It's never bad. To expect the unexpected, that's all I meant. This is scary. I didn't expect to hear a safety lecture from her. Bystanders could never comprehend the force behind Marie's change in speech. Marie would speak more plainly about things she felt more strongly about. A difficult task for someone with a speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. Logical, seeing that she only just recently begun remembering her vocabulary. Even with her limited vocabulary and the lack of situational awareness, Marie was in no way unintelligent. Coco, Marie's subordinate and partner, understood this. As they split up, a voice rang out in Coco's ear. Right ear. And that's basically Sian's voice, a.k.a. Kilo, it's your turn. Right. Coco? Coco! Can you hear me? Hmm? Oh, Sian? Yes, I can hear you. How are things on your end? They all dead yet? I flooded and sealed the first, second, and third floors of my mana. So, yeah. They're all dead. And unless their reinforcements start raining from the sky, there's no way for them to breach the gate into the keep. But get a load of this. I just finished offing those two guard these two guards, right? Seriously, they were total pushovers. I th think I'd get more of a thrill from killing these snoozers in my sleep. Says the person who volunteered to guard the rear. If you wanted action, you should have taken the lead. Oh, by the way, actually, I want you to use your uh, Malik's voice on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> See, okay. Because he. Oh boy. <clears throat> <laughs> so, how are things going on your end? Oh yes. Do I say that? Fine, change the yeah. topic. Yeah. Yeah. Fine, change the topic. That reminds me, you've got some explaining to do, Cian. You said that the princess was in the sky terrace, but she's not there. Mm hmm. Huh? She had to be there. If you check the balcony already, then scour the place until you find her. I know already, all right. I'm going to be sore from all this tomorrow. A thorough sweep of the terrace won't kill you, young'un. Says you, Sien. Why don't you come up here instead? Stop wasting time and get going, Coco. Finish this already. Lay off, bitch. Damn! <laughs> Lay off. <laughs> ugh, ugh. I gotta admit, <laughs> I gotta admit, knocking this nation off its foundation took a lot less effort than I had imagined. <laughs> I know what you mean. The indestructible reputation of... What can I say Rosenhide. This? Rosenhide just didn't live up to reality. To reality, Some symbol of the... Monocrafter. Monocrafter's alliance, huh? <laughs> the fact that Mistress Milano took an active role in the attack probably had... A lot to do with how easy it was. If I had to guess... Oh, who cares? The mistress is so unorthodox. I have no idea what she's thinking doing this. Have some faith, Sian. It's not like Mistress Milano could have done this on her own without us. 
<sighs> Actually, I personally think she could have single-handedly destroyed Rusenhide without us. Hmm? If I had to describe the mistress in one word, it'd be shrewd. Uh-huh. You've got a point. All right, then. I'm going to sc- I'm going to sec- <laughs> I'm going to go secure and seal the remaining floors now. I hope you find the target soon. Cyan out. Coco out. Mistress Mary and Cyan make everything sound so simple. Am I the only one who's feeling a bit worried now? Killjoys the both of them. I was just doing fine without them, too. As Gogo turned to make her way back to the Sky Terrace, Ooh. a flash of light shot out the corner of the out of the corner of the east <laughs> out of the east. <laughs> Introducing um, Ritona. This dude. Huh? Coco reacted a moment too late. Huh? <laughs> what? The head of Coco's staff was sliced clean off. Damn. My staff! Coco's staff was made from a lightweight alloy. Not especially known for its durability, but still metallic. The edge of a common sword might nick it, but anything shorter wouldn't, have leave, wouldn't have even leave a mark. Yeah. Coco's eyes were focused on the weapon's tip as it passed by her head digging its way into a stone wall before coming to a full stop. A an invisible knife? A knife dagger? A man cravat knife? Coco thought through the possibilities. Whatever type it was, she realized assessing her assailant took prece precedence. Pre precedence, yeah. H who goes there? Show yourself! Ah, uh, here you go, Tritona. She's uh, basically um, pri princess uh, Selfie's um, bodyguard and very formal and, you know, that kind of stuff. Royalty! Yeah. So pretty. She's so purple. Purdy. <laughs> She's so purdy. <laughs> oh my god. Um, oh my god. So, I oh. want the one voicing Ritona who doesn't have role yet. Or do, do any one of you have role? I mean, I am. Um. I, I don't have a role. Okay, then, Sophia, uh, you're Ritona. Me? I thought it was Coco. A servant to the royals, Coco thought. I didn't do anything. She wore a purple cloak over a tricolor tunic, both made from fine silk. However, what immediately drew Coco's attention was not the quality of the girl's clothes, but the crest which shimmered through around the collar of her cloak. A crest represented her rank in the Mancrafters Alliance. Manacrafters. 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 Yeah. A dual crafter. A dual crafter? Hmm. Um, hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm just doing this for a quick second. I may have to go, dear. Oh, uh, the fact that the girl could have been older than 20, I'm sorry. It's fine. I can narrate, sure. I guess. All right. All right. Bye. But I have to go in like 15 minutes. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. <clears throat> Shocked Coco more than the translucent knife that had been flung at her. Ratona, I get oh, how Rain Vasta. Ratona, Rain Vasta. Coco didn't know it, but Ratana Rainvasta was royal guardian to Princess Celefine, Celefine Rosenhide. Yes. Okay, good. But where are you hiding? Wh whoa. But where were you hiding this whole time? Who's reading her? Hmm? Who's reading is her? The one who's not Coco? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so, so me. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hi. Okay. Hi. <laughs> hi. Okay. Yeah. What are you after? Why do you seek my lady? Asked Ratona, having having intentionally ignored Coco's question. 
knowing that she would not receive a satisfactory reply. Ratona concluded that learning any information regarding the enemy's objective was of the utmost importance. Seek Mulvaney? <laughs> You've got it all wrong. Listen, we haven't got a plan. We're only here to brighten Ruse and hide up, literally. Now, whether or not we decide to set you on fire is completely up to us. Got it. You're at a, you're all at our mercy. We're in control now. If you want to live, then you'd better liven up and tell us everything we want to know. If you don't talk, I'll kill you. Simple as that. Oh, by the way, I love her looks on her face. Coco's face. Like, hee <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Very well. In judging by your attire, I'm gonna guess you're a servant around here, right? You wouldn't happen to know where Selfine is, would you? I do know where she is. You do? Great, let's do this then. You tell me where she is, and I promise to spare you. You will. And if I refuse. Well, obviously. If you don't tell me, then I'll kill you. Duh! <laughs> Aren't my demands pretty simple and motivational? Hmm. Hmm? Are you trying to get on my bad side or something? Has the smoke gone to your head? Is your brain too fried to, comp to comprehend the situation here? I'm starting to lose my patience with you. The next thing out of your mouth better be Selephine's location or... Princess. What? You shall address my lady as Princess Selphine, you disrespectful child. Ooh, damn. Yee. Yeah. The inferno blazing in Ratona's eyes melted away her cool and collected demeanor. Huh? I do not know what it is you seek to gain from committing regi fuck? regicide. Yeah. <laughs> but you shall submit yourself before common courtesy and address the Princess of Rusenhide by her proper title. You utter disgrace. This is- whoa, that was not what the line was. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're a disgrace! <laughs> <laughs> your utter disregard for my lady's official title is evidence enough of your lack of morality. Huh? The time for talk is over. Duel me. Fight me. That is the only way you imbeciles know how to conduct yourselves. You will learn common courtesy after I have thoroughly disciplined you. Huh? Didn't you hear a single word I said? You think you can duel me? You think you can beat me? Are you out of your mind? Who cares if you're a dual crafter? You can't beat me! Your stupid mana crafter rank in the Alliance doesn't mean a damn- Doesn't mean a damn where I'm from. Oh my god. Me and damn where I'm from. <laughs> Country girl. <laughs> On guard! Oh, <laughs> oh god. In an instant, both mana crafters began gathering their purified mana. Whoa! Two ethereal orbs of light slowly materialized and revolved around Matona, causing Coco to stare in awe. They began... Uh, argument... Argumenting? Yeah. Okay, their mana with the surrounding mana, preparing for battlecraft. Battlecraft. Gradually... <laughs> I'm sorry. Gradually, a torrential mix of colored mana began, revol began revolving around Matona. <laughs> Matona had initiated the incantation interval, which gathers together both colored and purified mana. This resulted in an already overwhelming display of her master of pyro and terra mana craft. Or so Coco had originally thought. What materialized from Matona's extravagant display of color and purified mana was translucent, bladed weapon. Which most pyro and terra dual crafters can create if they are inclined to melee attacks. Y you've got my hopes up with that pretty light show, and that sword's all you have to show for it? However, it was no ordinary blade. A glass. It's a glass sword. You're out of your mind. What of it? Y you're nothing but a glass crafter. Do you have a death wish or something? You really think you can defeat me with that brittle blade? Enough chatter, child. Let us commence our duel. Ugh. Keep it up, you big bitch. Just Whoa. keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> Call me a child one more time. I dare you. I double dare you. You think you can stop me, Glass Crafter? Is that what you think? Well, you're dead wrong. Black. 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 
As Coco concluded her declaration, she slammed the tip of her staff twice into the ground, causing a glowing triangle to emerge at the base of Ratona's feet. <laughs> He's casting a ranged mana craft. Instead of engaging me in melee combat... Oh, what? That was a question. In e. I'll make your passing a pain- I'll make your passing as painful as possible. Arise! Ooh. Can't you stop? Tr How do I say this? Incineration? Incineration. Incineration. All right. Triangle incineration! Silence covered the east wing, followed by a pillar of fire shooting from the glowing triangle to the ceiling. Ooh! Ooh. Sluggish. Ratona escaped the trap, landing squarely behind Coco while running the tip of her sword along her back. Yeah! <laughs> Coco reacted in an instant, leaning forward while kicking hard at the ground to, re to move away from Ratona. Uh -huh. Why does she keep doing that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> After landing at a safe distance, Coco quickly assessed her wo wound, but... Can't read. What, where is it? What the... The wound was nowhere to be seen. The agonizing sensation of sharp glass carving through her back gradually dulled and dissipated. How did you? Coco realized then how the wound had vanished. At first glance, Ratona's sword would only appear to be made from glass. But it was, in fact, a lethal weapon of unusual craft. This glass sword is actually crafted from transidian ore. It's often mistaken for plain glass. A, a transidian sword? An ore capable of creating the sharpest edge known to humankind. Wow. It really did. But it's almost impossible to forge. Refining the ore without breaking it is impossible. But it can be done. My mastery of pyro and terra mana craft allow for the creation of transidian weapons, though it takes some time. Well, why would you bother crafting a sword out of transidian at all? Don't you think forging a sword out of an al al alloy would have been easier? What difference does the material make, so long as the resulting edged weapon serves its purpose? That's your reasoning for crafting some weird double-edged weapon? In fact, why are you even dueling me with a sword? It makes no sense. You're a little slow on the uptake, aren't you? <laughs> My battlecraft fort is in melee combat. Ratona leapt in an instant. Huh? Coco knew she wouldn't be outmatched in melee combat. So she tried to gain distance over Ratona. Arise, my shadow soldiers! Coco slammed the tip of her staff into the ground once more. A shadow from the staff stretched to the nearest wall from whence shadowy warriors began to emerge. Coco summoned fourth four of her fourth four of her shadow soldiers. Yeah. They quickly surrounded and trapped Ratona, leaving her no room to escape. This girl can summon shadow soldiers? The very same ones that attacked our castle? Be careful. She's a slippery one. Cut her down before she uses that sword on you. And make sure she doesn't come anywhere near me. Coco raised her staff again, spreading a glowing wave of mana into the air. The glowing halo of mana wafted well, towards the encircled that what to, and and encircled the foreshadowed. So I can't read. May my wisdom of pyro and terra craft and breakable chains. Ding ding. Ding ding. Slam. Coco's staff made contact with the ground once more, and the halo of mana materialized into a steel chain. How can she create and manipulate that chain from a distance? I need to seal her movements. With a single stroke of her finger, Coco's shadow soldiers attempted to contain and maim Ritona. My, those are my sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> Regardless of her entrapment, she continued to bob and weave through the countless swings of the shadow soldiers. Ethereal long swords. I've got her now. Clink, clink. Coco's steel chain fell over, sa fell over her shadow soldiers, and they used it to bind and trap Ratona. 
<laughs> There's no escape this time. I'm gonna enjoy watching you die. Coco and the Shadow Soldier six closed in on the now chained Ratona, clasping hands to one another in the shape of a pentagram. Uh oh. And then. Arise! Coco's staff and the Shadow Soldier's black sword simultaneously struck the ground at five points. From those five points, a glowing pentagram formed on the ground where Ratona stood. <laughs> pentagram incineration. Hold on. I uh, think it's going kind of. Oh, never mind. It stopped. <laughs> Another pillar shot towards the ceiling in a flash. While the triangle was sort scorched into the stone ceiling from a Coco's first attack. This attack punched a pentagram shaped hole straight through the ceiling, revealing a full moon floating in the night sky. Whoa. <gasps> Woohoo! I print that bitch to a crisp! <laughs> What's the matter with you all? It's time to celebrate? Coco's shadow soldiers had ceased to respond to their master's beckoning, throwing Coco into confusion. Huh? Oh. They think you got me, bitch. <gasps> Never forget the sensation. Oh. Bad ass. Damn. For the sensation <laughs> surpasses that of steel. Spoke a voice as Kako's shadow soldiers dis... Dispersed. Okay. Yet again, Ratona had escaped Kako's trap and made her way around Kako's back. Coco was once more at Ratona's mercy. And she was and she now found herself with the tip of tra of a transidian sword pressed pressed against her back. Neck. Neck! Oh my god. Even when lightly pressed against skin, the sensation of flesh being slowly flayed was evident from Coco's grimace. That's not fair! Glass can't cut through steel! It just can't! Something about you doesn't add up. You're skilled in conventional combat of mana craft, but those very skills are unsuited for it. Uh -huh. Your first attack was powerful enough to scorch stone, and your second attack far surpassed the first, blasting straight through mortar. Mor mortar. mortar. But the incantation intervals for both mana crafts were, was too costly. I could have defeated you easily in the time you took. Twice. Thus... Your ranged mana craft was insufficient in a duel that called for ranged. I don't need your stupid lecture. Ugh! Coco clung desperately to her staff, bearing the immense pain of Ratona's transiting sword against her neck. Why, when I was so close to achieving our objective, did I encounter this bitch? Very well. Your life is in my hands, but I do not wish to spill your blood. I detest using force as a means of, revo of resolution. I only desire dialogue to end this needless bloodshed. The pain Coco felt from the sword dim diminished. Dialogue! <laughs> Coco reacted to Ratona's <laughs> ultimatum with disgust. But in an instant... <laughs> You're something else, you know that! Coco reached a conclusion regarding her opponent. She realized that Ratona would ultimately choose not to kill her, which brought her to a dark delight. You're a riot. Coco sneered and lunged the tip of her staff down towards Ratona's foot. <laughs> what kind of idiot would want dialogue with the people who massacred her people? Oh, I know who... Oh, God. Oh, I know who would. You! In Indeed. I don't even know who says that. <laughs> Compassion had no place on the battlefield, even from a citizen of a kingdom re renowned for pursuing pacifism. Pacific. Even Ratona was well aware of this paradox. She knew she could be forced to take her foe's head. Ratona resisted, even struggled against the impulse, of, the impulse to kill Coco. It was this very impulse that set Coco and Ratona apart. Coco was capable of committing murder without a hit of hesitation. You cannot defeat me, child. Your provocations fall on deaf ears. The only idiot here is the one who's still struggling when there's a sword pressed against her throat. 
Rotunda struggled against the concept of executing the child. She even struggled against the concept of this child committing mass murder without a shred of hesitance. The concept of child soldiers was foreign to Ratona, who didn't know how, to f how fortunate she was to be born and raised in a peaceful kingdom. To Coco, Ratona's mercy was a childish, ide uh, childish ideal to pursue on the battlefield. It was kill or be killed. Looking to a wall. E. Your mercy makes no sense to me. Do you know how many of your people I've slaughtered tonight? And you want to settle this peacefully? Through dialogue? Oh, shit. How naive can you be? Is it so wrong to take a life? If it means protecting someone you can't live without? Ugh. Well, is it so wrong? We're not so different, you and I. I know you'd kill to protect your precious princess. <laughs> Ratona gave no retort. She was apprehensive at the very aspect of agreeing with Coco's creed. That's the air, though. It was like Ratona to be rattled by words so. In fact, Ratona was shocked into speechlessness, followed by a disquieting silence that befell the chamber. Ratona had never, left an, never let an opponent's words affect her to the point of speech, speechlessness. The unnatural silence that filled the air felt almost organic. As if produced to conceal a shadow. A shadow which found it itself directly behind Ratona. Oh, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Cravat Crusher. <sighs> Ratona's transidian sword, reli reliable through her duel, was suddenly reduced to mic microscopic fragments. Oh, wow. Uh oh, my sword. Oh, my goodness. Damn. <laughs> my sword. It shattered for mana instability. I should have been able to detect this. Case in point. This is my faithful partner, Mistress Murray. We'd kill to protect each other. Ellipses. <laughs> Marie greeted Ratona with her signature hand wave. Create more shadow soldiers yet. I will now. I warned you that. You would need those 150 shadow soldiers. Create sturdier shadow soldiers. I shall, Mistress Murray. What, what did... What did you do to my sword? Ellipses? <laughs> <laughs> Broke it? With Gravat Crusher. Crafty Crusher. Crafter Crusher. Yeah. <laughs> you can do that? Oh, wow. Metacraft dis <laughs> Metacraft dis 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 Disabilization and Nullification, but... How? It should be an impossible feat. Normally, a great deal of time and mana would be dedicated to such a thing. Mary's ability allow her to, be to bypass that altogether. Ellipses? <laughs> I wouldn't try to understand how the mistress' ability came to be. You've got more important things to worry about. Just know that the incantation interval doesn't apply to any of the mistress's mana craft, but for the rest of us, it does. That... that just can't be true! It's impossible! Ratana ignored Coco's advice and tried to make sense of it. Despite Coco's firepower, the incantation interval required for that each... for each cast left... Each cast left her at a disadvantage when dueling. However, Coco's partner ensures absolute defense. They are the perfect sword and shield. The tables have turned for Ratona. Oh, because, yeah. of, because of the time she spent demanding Coco's surrender. Who was that? Hi. Oh, that was me. Ratona's pursuit for <laughs> compassion. <laughs> uh. Had betrayed her in turn. Forgive me, my lady. Stay low to the ground. Here we go, selfie. Okay, it's... I actually have to go now, though. Ah, okay. Um, I had to go to bed. Yeah, it's fine. I'm gonna save. Hold on. Uh, if I just know how. Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, derb. Um, yeah. But that was the first episode of uh, uh, Fall Milestone One, turning four. 
more later on but for now